Hello there guys and welcome back to my series which is probably going to be called something along the lines of Let's Learn Civilization. Um, I'm going to carry on straight where we left off on the last video and that is to resolve this turn and see what happens. Now so far we haven't met any of the other civilizations. We've met one city-state. We haven't found any barbarians yet. We have found one or two... Um, ancient ruins which have given us a bit of a bonus we've also managed to find a couple of uh, world wonders which are too far away from our borders to work at the moment but who knows what the future holds so we're waiting for city states and barbarians to process their turns now one thing that i did on that last turn which i didn't explain as i said if i go to move my warriors you can see that down here it says my warriors have a movement of two, which means they should technically be able to move two spaces. But because they're in trees, they can only move one because of the terrain penalty for moving through forests. So if I hold down the right mouse button and drag, you can see that the blue outline indicates how far they can move on one turn. If I drag to a space outside of that, it will say two or three or four, depending on how many turns it's going to take them to get there. So it is possible to... Um, sort of queue up uh, a number of moves. So I'm going to try and get my guys to move to there, which will take them until turn three. So I'm going to leave them to do that. We've gained enough culture to adopt another social policy. Now, we unlocked tradition the first time around. So we've got an option here. We could take any of these first three, or we could adopt another policy, but there's no point at the moment. Aristocracy would give us an extra 15% production, but only when building wonders. And it would also give us an extra happiness in the city for every 10 citizens. We could have legalism, which gives us a free culture building in the first four cities. Or the oligarchy, Archie, whatever that is. Uh, garrisoned units cost no maintenance and cities with a garrison gain 50% ranged combat strength. Well, I've not really got anybody attacking me at the moment. So the best thing to do is legalism, because that will allow me to eventually get to landed elite, which is an extra 10% growth rate and two food in the capital city, and monarchy, which gives me additional gold and removes unhappiness for every two citizens in the capital. So legalism is always the best way to go. You can see up here how much happiness you have. If you mouse over it, it'll tell you where your happiness comes from. You'll also see in red below it how much unhappiness is being generated. Unhappiness is basically generated by things like overpopulation and uh, expanding too rapidly. You do want to keep it balanced. You want to keep happy because a happy civilization is a productive civilization. If your civilization becomes unhappy, you will only start to produce things at 25% of the maximum speed, which is a really bad thing to happen. So let's carry on and crack through these turns and start getting to something a bit more interesting and exciting. So there we have Florence, who is currently being attacked by barbarians, and now the barbarians are attacking my scouts, which is a little bit of a pain. Scouts are very weak, unfortunately. They're not designed for fighting, they're designed for scouting. Um, luckily, these guys were in Florence's borders, and Florence did take a shot at them. Now, whenever... Um, these units are all classed as melee units, because they have a strength here. If they had... Uh, range strength below then they would be a ranged unit because this is a melee unit if a melee unit attacks another unit it will also take damage itself so if i put my mouse over the barbarians you can see that it's coming up saying minor defeat so even though we'd both come out of it with units still left alive they would come out of it better off than me um, my strength is only seven their strength is eight i would um, inflict approximately 24 damage and they would uh, inflict approximately 27. So I do have a combat uh, bonus versus barbarians but the chances are I won't come out of that very very well. What I'm going to do with these um, guys is um, I could move away and try and heal or I could fight. Either way is a bit of a risk at the moment. I don't really have any units close enough to help them out and I don't really want to risk losing them. But I think what I'm going to have to do is... Um, they are still close enough to be shot at by uh, Florence if they decide to take a shot at them on the next turn. So I think I am going to attack them. I might lose my scouts. But at this point in the game, killing the Barbarians would be really good. 
Okay, so there's this guy popping up and just telling me it's an even battle. I usually have the advisors turned off because I don't really need their help. So, defeating barbarians next to a city-state is normally good because the city-state are normally really grateful for you defeating the barbarians and therefore they will usually uh, become a little bit more friendly with you. One thing I didn't show you is if you click on a city-state, you can either give them a gift... So you can actually um, give them gold, and the more gold you're willing to give them, the more influence you'll get with them. Or you can gift them a unit for a measly five influence. Um, you can also ask them for a tribute, which is basically saying you want them to give you stuff. Um, they won't always do that. Um, depends how friendly you are with them. Or you can pledge to protect them, but you need to be friendly with them in order to do that. Hopefully they're going to try and take these barbarians out on the next turn. I'm going to hit next turn anyway, see what those barbarians do. Probably means there's a barbarian camp around somewhere. Now that's good. Unfortunately I didn't get to take them out, sadly. What I probably should have done was waited on that turn. Allowed Florence to take their pot shots first and then mop them up. But what I can do is fortify until healed. If you do not move a unit, if a unit takes no actions in a turn, it will start to heal. Um, it will um, gain three hit points per turn if it's in friendly territory. It will gain two hit points per turn in neutral territory and one hit point per turn in enemy territory. I'm in neutral territory, so I'm going to gain two hit points back per turn. So let's carry on. As you can see, we're already starting to regenerate people there. So it's not fully healed, it's going to stay there. Unit needs orders, which is going to be my warriors. So let's start taking them back round. We're going to go up the other side of the river, see what we can find. I'm actually amazed we haven't run into any bandit camps yet. Uh, normally if there's bandits around, there is going to be a bandit camp. Now, bandit camps can spawn... Shall the clay say to him okay, we have pottery, we'll sort that out in a second. Bandit camps can actually spawn anywhere where you can't see. Just like this one here. And the technology level of bandits will be whatever is the highest um, tech on the board. So if one player has paratroopers as their, high, as their strongest unit, then you could end up with paratrooper barbarians. You could even get barbarian tanks and barbarian XCOM squads, so the barbarians do get stronger as the game goes on. Luckily, as the game goes on, more and more of the map is uncovered, which means that there's less likely for barbarian camps to spawn. Now, it's pretty much going to be a stalemate if I attack these guys, because they are fortified. I get a 40% bonus versus barbarians, but they get a 40% bonus because they're fortified. So, I'm going to try and skirt around the outside of them, attack them from the forest if I can. At the same time, I'm going to keep my scouts um, healing up. Got to choose my research. Now, I've got to decide where I'm going to go here. Calendar and the wheel are usually two that are worth getting at this point. Uh, the wheel will give me chariot archers, which is a very, very useful unit. And it will also allow me to construct roads. And roads mean that you, um, if you move units across roads, you don't pay the terrain penalty for that particular tile. And also, when you get to a point where you have... Um, I think it's engineering, you can actually move uh, more quickly across roads as well. So you can really start covering the map very, very fast. When you've got multiple cities, you can also join them together with roads and you get bonuses from having them connected to the capital. We will need to pick mining up at some point just so we can unlock, unlock masonry and bronze working. And calendar is also very useful because it allows us to build plantations as well as the stoneworks. But I think for the moment, we're going to go for the wheel. And see if we can get some early chariot archers. Although we are a little bit stuck at the moment because we don't have any horses yet. We've nearly finished these workers. So once those workers are finished, maybe we'll have a bit more of an opportunity to um, build some more offensive units. So we can start dealing with these barbarian camps. Now what will happen is barbarians will occasionally move out of their camp. And when they move out of their camp, they will... Um, respawn some more barbarians within the camp. And there we go, that's exactly what's just happened. So, more barbarians have spawned next to the camp, which is a bit of a pain. I don't want to get too close to those at the moment, because it could end up very, very bad for me. So, I'm going to stay in the forest. Now, 
these barbarian brutes shouldn't be able to see me because although they can see two hexes, I'm in a forest and there's a forest between us. If they were in this hex, they would be able to see me because you can see into a forest if you're standing next to it. And they'd also be able to see me if they were standing on this hill because the hill lets you see over forests. But because this forest hex is between us, they shouldn't be able to see me there. So we should be fairly safe. We've produced our worker. So I think what we're going to do now is just quickly throw out an archer because it's only going to take five turns and because archers are a ranged unit they're very cheap they're a very easy way of taking out um, uh, barbarians from a distance. Now there's several reasons you want to kill barbarians. Firstly they'll try and attack your stuff which you don't want. Secondly you'll actually gain XP from killing barbarians although you can only gain up to 30 XP for each of your military units. So once this military unit has gained 30 XP it'll no longer gain any more from killing barbarians. If you manage to wipe out the camp and move your units into the camp, the camp will be destroyed and you will get usually some gold as a bonus. And if it's close to uh, another city that it's been hassling, you'll get a bit of a bonus for that as well. So it's always worth taking barbarian camps out when and where you can. Now we now have workers. Now workers have the job of improving tiles. What they can essentially do is they can clear forests and jungles. They can... Uh, put farms in they can put plantations and things in which are needed to um, you know get dyes and furs and all of the extra things that you need to make a tile give you a higher yield now you can assign them manually so for example what I could do is I could move them up here onto this hill I can't do anything with them this turn because they've used all their movement moving and we'll look on the next turn so we're gonna hit next turn so those barbarian brutes are being attacked by somebody. There's clearly somebody over here in that direction. I don't know who that is because I can't see them. It could be a city-state or it could be another civilization there off the map. So I've got my workers here. Now currently my workers can't actually build anything on this particular tile because they don't actually have uh, the ability to chop down the forest because I don't have mining yet. I did that very deliberately because I want to keep the forests as long as I can to gain some faith. So what I'm going to do is put them on automated just for the time being. They'll get to the tiles that they can upgrade and they'll start to upgrade those tiles. Now these guys have moved around because they were attacked, so I could attack them and go for a minor victory, which I think is what I'm going to do. Obviously I'm not going to wipe them out, which means I'm not going to end up moving into that tile. Um, so they're not going to be able to see me still, which is good. These guys are still recovering, but they may be able to come and join the fight later. So I'm going to hit next turn, see if the guys down here crawl out of the woodwork. Right, they're deciding to attack me this turn, but they're going to take damage as well, because as I said before, it's melee versus melee. Okay, unit needs orders. So, it's my turn and I have the option of attacking. Now this is going to be a decisive victory. If I attack him, he is dead. But it also means that I'm going to move into this forest hex, which then potentially means these guys could attack me. But we need to start wiping them out and I may even get a promotion for doing it. That guy is taking a long time to die. This is because sometimes the animation glitches out and it takes ages for one guy to hack a barbarian to pieces. There we go, finally killed him, and I gained 5 XP. Still can't quite see what's down there yet, so we're going to go next turn. Okay, we have a unit promotion. Now, we have several options that we can do with this unit promotion. We can give it drill 1, which means we get an extra 15% combat strength when we're fighting in rough terrain, such as hills, forests, or jungle. And we can give it shock, which is additional 15% combat strength when fighting in open terrain. Now, we can actually... Um, go for both not on the same turn but there's no reason to say that one unit can't actually have both of these promotions or I could go for an instant heal uh, but then that's just a one-time thing and I would lose the opportunity for a promotion if I attack them now it is going to be a defeat anyway so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for the instant heal and then I am going to attack them. It will be a stalemate but it will weaken them and then I can hopefully retreat into the forest and try and recover a little bit. Um, our scouts have now fully healed as well so we could move our scouts closer and then we could potentially attack with them on the next turn. Still telling me they need orders because they've got a, a movement point left. Uh, I think I will move them all, all the way down actually. The Barbarians may attack them on this turn, but at least then they're not attacking my Warriors, so that's a good thing. And at the moment, as you can see, my Workers aren't actually doing anything. The reason for that is they haven't actually got anything they can do, so we really need to, uh, to start getting some uh, technologies discovered. 
So maybe I should have gone for mining early on just so they could start clearing forests. Every now and then you will get one of these little pop-ups that just tell you how the game is progressing. People who like the shiny things the most, so I think this is basically coming down to who has the most gold. As you can see, I have 64 gold, so I am 7th. There are 6 other civilizations that have more gold than me. Oh well, never mind. So we can adopt another policy, and I am going to go for um, growth rate. It's all about growth. The quicker you can grow, the quicker you can produce buildings, units, science, gold. So it's very, very uh, useful to have um, lots of growth. At this point in the game, I haven't decided what type of victory that I'm going for, because I can't quite tell what kind of map I'm on. It looks like it could be um, continents... And, I don't know, we're going to have to scout around and see what we've got. It also depends what people we're up against as well. So, what I'm going to try and do, I think, is attack with my sc scouts. It will be a minor defeat, and I know that's going to happen. But then that does weaken them so that my uh, warriors can go in, which will then be a minor victory. So, they're looking pretty weak now. and It's quite possible that I could potentially wipe them out on my next turn if things don't go horribly wrong. So, unfortunately, another group of barbarians has just appeared, which is a real pain in the hoop. We can promote our scouts. Now, I quite like this one, survivalism. They gain 5 HP per turn outside of friendly territory and gain an extra 25% uh, defense, which is absolutely brilliant for those. Um, so, I think what we're going to do, um, it will be a minor defeat if I attack with them. That I appreciate. But then we can heal them up. And then if we attack here, it'll be a decisive victory. We'll wipe the camp out. We've still got these guys to deal with, but the camp is gone. It's off our doorstep, which is fantastic. So we take the camp and we gain 25 gold. Unfortunately, we're now in a bit of a predicament because we've potentially got these guys that could kill us. So we're going to have to see what happens there. Uh, we can now build uh, a new unit again. We might end up needing to build a warrior, actually, but I'm going to avoid that for the time being. I think what I will do is build a granary, because again, that gives us um, extra food. It And uh, each source of wheat, bananas and deer work by the city also give us an extra food. And as you can see, we've got two deer within the city's borders, and we've also got uh, another one here, potentially. So, as you can see, my borders are starting to expand. If I click on the city... Um, these purple borders are where my, these purple hexes are where my borders will grow. So as you can see here, because of my culture, in four turns, my borders will grow. And these purple hexes are the ones that it will expand into. I can also, if I have enough money, buy a tile. And you can buy any tile within three hexes of the city. And they're different costs depending on, um, what's in the tile, basically. But I don't want to waste any money, uh buying them what you can also do when you click on a city you can change the production so if you've got a unit that's already uh, already building you can change the production but you can also click on purchase and you can use gold to quickly buy a unit or a building or faith depending on your um, bonuses that you have so a unit needs orders which is our archer now, I originally bought them to deal with the barbarian problem, and that's still what they're going to be doing. So, I'm going to try and quickly move them over to this side of the map, and hopefully these guys aren't going to get wiped out too badly. They're still being shot at by whatever civilization is here, although they're now deciding to attack my warriors, which is not ideal, but I kind of had a feeling that's what they were going to do anyway. Now... Do I have any possibility of beating them with these guys? No, I don't. If I try and attack them with my scouts, it is going to be a defeat. So I'm going to retreat into the forest. I can't see where they are anymore, but at least I'm able to heal. And I'm going to keep moving my archers across. Maybe we can take them out with the archers. So another civilization somewhere has founded uh, their own pantheon. And they have gone for the goddess of protection. So they get an extra 30% increase in the city's ranged combat strength. We don't know who that's going to be yet. So I'm just going to get these guys to quickly fortify until healed. Now, when you fortify, you're basically telling a unit not to move. 
On the turn that you fortify, they gain a 25% defensive bonus, and every additional turn after that, they gain a 50% defensive bonus. So the first the first turn that you fortify them on, they're only going to gain 25%, and then after that, it goes up to 50%. So if they get attacked, um, they will stand a little bit more of a chance. So I'm going to keep moving my archers this way. Hopefully, I'll spot those barbarians before they spot me. Uh, it's going to cost me again. I'm only going to get one hex at a time because I'm crossing a river and moving through trees. It's a bit of a pain, but this is what happens with start bias. Because my um, civilization skill, if you like, my civilization bonus gives me a lot of faith from the surrounding forests, it will always dump me in an area that is surrounded by forests. So let's keep moving this way. Can't see those barbarians yet, which is a little bit worrying. Um, I'm just going to poke my scouts out of hiding. Hoping my scouts will spot them. Nothing yet, sadly. They're still going to regain five hit points per turn anyway because of that uh, upgrade I gave them on the uh, last promotion they had. Wisdom and We've now discovered the wheel, which means we can make chariot archers. Well, we could if we had any horses. Uh, we could build water mills, any cities next to a river, and that will give us additional food. But we can also build roads, more importantly. Um, which means if we... Uh, allows workers to construct roads, which allow units to move across the map faster and provides extra gold when connecting cities to your capital. Well, I don't have another city at the moment. I will do shortly. We will be building another city. Okay. Completely have no idea where those barbarians have gone. I'm going to move my archers up onto the hill so hopefully they've got the best view. Ah, there's the barbarians there. We found Mombasa, so it is another city-state. Um, they provide us with a gift of 15 gold, which means we're not the first major civilization that they've met. So there's another civ down here in this corner of the map somewhere. Um, they're a maritime... Um, state, which means they will actually boost food if we're friends or allies. They're irrational, and they too have horses and silver, which is quite nice. And we found their barbarians. So if we can take these barbarians out, um, they'll be really grateful for that. Time for research, and as you can see, our military, economic, and science advisor are saying mining. It's only going to take six turns. Let's get that done. It'll allow us to clear forests, and then our workers will finally become useful and able to do something. Um, Going to get these guys to just heal up while the archers move close enough to do their thing. Of course, Mombasa could actually take them out before that happens. Ah, now this... No, he's legged it. That's a shame. I was about to say, if he'd have stayed on that hex, I was just going to get my um, scouts to kill him. In the name of the great Deutsch people, I call you welcome. Okay, so we have met Bismarck. We have found our first civilization with his awesome mustache there. And um, not an awful lot we can do with him at the moment. This is just an introduction to say, yep, you found me. This is where I am. And it's because we've ran into his uh, his warriors down there at the bottom. Um, so it's quite possible here that um, he, this barbarian is just going to run into them and get absolutely slaughtered. It's not a good idea to linger your troops in uh, city-states borders because it does tend to uh, annoy them a little bit on each turn, but not to worry too much. I'm going to move my archers down just in case we get a chance to take a pot shot. Found some sugar down here as well, which is nice, but there's nothing else we can really do on this turn, so let's hit the button. And they've got him. They, they, they took him out, so that's fine. So I'm going to move my guys out of their borders and heal up. And we'll do a little bit of exploration with our archers. Uh, one thing that I do want to do is, is keep the archers relatively close to my city, just in case another barbarian camp turns up and I need to defend. Um, again, not a lot of lot else that can go on with this turn. Like I said, these early, early turns can be quite boring. Uh, and this is often why some people don't bother putting their units on automate, because in the early turns, it gives you something to do if you just want to click around and move all your units manually. So, I'm going to run my archers into this ancient ruins and I hope that I really get something nice. Um, advanced weapons, which is brilliant because now my archers have been upgraded to composite bowmen, which is absolutely brilliant and gives them uh, a much needed boost. Uh, those guys can stay there and fortify. And again, let's hit next turn because there's nothing else going on. Okay, so our production is complete of whatever we were producing, and I can't even remember what that was now. I guess it was the granary, there we go. So we could build a shrine. Now, it's probably a good time to think about building another settler. 
a settler will allow us to go out and build a second city, which is always worth having. Um, the problem is, is while a settler is being constructed, all of the additional food that a city produces is being consumed, which means the city will stop growing for those 10 turns. Here's some barbarians that have just turned up, which is exactly what I was saying about wanting to keep my archers close. Um, a good place to set up a new city, though. That's the problem. Somewhere in the forests would be ideal. I don't know. I really don't know what I'm going to do at the moment. What I am going to do, though, is I'm going to build some warriors. Just so we've got a little bit more defense here on this turn. I'm going to try and get my bowmen... There's, there's no quick way of getting my bowmen across there, unfortunately. I'm just going to have to head through the forest and hope for the best. So, we'll go on to the next turn. Yeah, they're entering my land now, which isn't particularly good. But they're now within two hexes of my city, which means my city can actually fire on them, which is what I'm going to do. So, I'm going to take a pot shot at them, do some damage... Now, workers are a non-combat unit, which means that they could actually attack my workers and try and kidnap my workers. So I'm going to tell my workers to actually move out of the way. They can't do it on this turn, but hopefully on the next turn they should be able to get out of the way. Let's um, go for the next turn. Okay, looks like we've got more barbarians attacking Mombasa. Not sure I can do an awful lot about that at the moment. We now have mining. So, let's try and deal with this one thing at a time. Uh, they're getting a little bit close to my workers. There's also more barbarians here. So, yeah, I really need to start bringing the troops home. I am going to move my workers down here. Bearing in mind these guys could only move one heck, so they should be safe. I am going to attack those guys. I am going to continue trying to get these guys over there. But I don't think they're going to make it. Um... See, I could attack them for a minor victory. But at the same time, I get the feeling that Mombasa is going to fire at them on the next turn anyway. So I might just leave that and not do anything. Just get the, them guys to fortify up. Choose my research. Where are we going to go from here? Well, probably trapping because I do have some furs nearby. So let's go for trapping. Let's get all the bonuses we can. Let's hit next turn, see what happens. So, yep, as I thought, Mombasa fires at them. The guy doesn't manage to run away. Uh, Edinburgh's grown. Edinburgh can fire on an enemy. Enemy's been spotted near Edinburgh. So, going to be in trouble in a minute. Going to kill these guys. Or this guy. Eventually. There we go. So, we get a little bit of XP. Um, Mombasa will be grateful with that. We gain 12 influence with them. Fantastic. So, that's good. And then we've got these guys over here, which are still... Well, it looks like they're just passing through, but we need rid of them. Right, we've got them wiped out. That's good. We need to be careful with these other guys. So, I'm still going to just move my... Uh, oh, still going to move my workers out of the way. Now, this is what I was saying about recommendations. I've selected the workers and you can see it's recommending that I construct a farm here and here. Well, that's exactly what I'm going to do. But it'll have to be on the next turn. Got to keep my eye on these guys, though. Continue to move these guys up as best I can. It's going to take me a while to get there, sadly. i will find out where these other... Yeah, we got rid of those. We know we've grown. And... Right, okay. So, I'm going to go on to the next turn. Still got more barbarians here, which we need to be careful of. You guys are going to carry on moving up. I know it's going to take you a while to get there. Those guys have moved out of my territory for now, which is good. These guys can now go on. So I've got the option here to tell them to construct a farm, which is what's recommended on this tile. So even if you don't see one of these, if you move your workers onto a tile and go, I want to build something here. It will tell you what it recommends to construct. But you also have the options to build all of the other items that you can do. So I can chop down a forest. The forest on this tile will be removed, providing 20 production to the nearest city. Well, if I build a farm here, the forest will be chopped down anyway. So I'm going to build the farm. You can also build roads. And you can build a road on an tile that isn't upgraded. You can also... So it'll build the road straight through the forest. You can build a road on a clear 
cleared tile and you can also build a road on a tile that already has an upgrade so even if there was a farm here I could still build a road through it so roads can occupy a tile that has something else on it without a problem at all so let's start building a farm and once the farm is constructed that tile will then uh, give us extra food so a unit needs orders right stalemate if we attack these guys so I'm thinking once again go on to alert let Mombasa take a few pot shots at them. Hopefully weaken them enough so that my scouts can take them out. Might not happen that way, but we'll see how it goes. Yeah, unfortunately Mombasa just managed to take them out, which is a bit of a shame. But I wouldn't have been able to have destroyed them with my um, scouts anyway, which would have just resulted in Mombasa taking them out. So let's get them fully healed. Now we can choose production. And this is where we have to start to think about what we want to do here. Well... I'm probably going to build a shrine because adopting an early religion could be really useful for us. Because when you have a religion, you do get certain boosts and bonuses. And there are only a set number of religions that you can have. Um, the total number of religions can be found is six, regardless of how many people are playing. So let's get a shrine built nice and early. It's only going to take four turns. We've now got a warrior here and we are going to move him out. We're going to try and find where those barbarians are. Probably up there hassling uh, Florence at this point. We're going to move these archers up as well. And use these guys to try and defend the city a little bit. Let's move on to the next turn. Trapping is six turns away from completion. Okay, not a lot happened on that turn. A little bit uneventful. Now, in a minute, we might have to pass units through one another. Now, the basic rules for unit stacking in Civ 5 is you have two types of unit. You have um, non-fighting units, non-combat units, such as workers, great people, um, great prophets and missionaries and inquisitors. And then you have your combat units, uh, oh, and caravans, things like that. And then you have your combat units, which are anything like warriors and archers and that kind of thing. You can't put two combat units on the same tile. And you can't put two non-combat units on the same tile. You can, however, have a combat unit and a non-combat unit on the same tile. Which is an, uh, brilliant if you're moving settlers around the map. Because you can put settlers on the same tile as a uh, group of warriors. If you've got some settlers on their own. And the enemy, or even barbarians, move into the same tile. They will capture them. But if you've got warriors on the tile with the settlers, then their attack will have to kill your warriors first before it can move into that tile. So it's always worth having a combat unit with them when and where you can. So let's move on to the next turn. There is a couple of exceptions to the rules. You do get great generals. Now, great generals themselves aren't technically a combat unit, so they will stack with combat units. And you can move land units like this through the water. You can embark them. And when you have a land unit embarked in the water, you can actually stack them with a naval unit, such as a galleon, for example. So there are a couple of exceptions to the rules. And again, I'll explain those more when we get to them. So we've now completed the shrine, and now it's either between a caravan or a settler. I think I still want a little bit more growth on Edinburgh. We're six turns away, and it's going to take seven turns for a caravan. So let's go for a caravan. At the moment, we can only have one trade route anyway. So we're going to set up a trade route and potentially have that trade route with Florence or possibly with Mombasa. Uh, it depends which one's easier to defend. There's always the possibility of a trade route being plundered by barbarians. So you need to make sure you can defend. Okay, these guys can now go back on to exploration. And see what they can find. They're probably just going to run straight into Germany. So as you can see, I can actually stack this unit on top of the worker. And if I click on this, this hex repeatedly, it will switch between the two units. But I'm going to continue to head up north and try and see what barbarians are about. So let's click on the next turn. And this will probably be the last turn before I end this video. Okay, Edinburgh demands silver. Well, there isn't an awful lot that we can actually do here because we don't have anywhere that's close to silver. We could potentially become allies with Mombasa or Florence because both of them have silver. 
Um, but we're not, we don't have a lot of money. We're not really in a strong position to do that. As much as I'd love to, it's going to have to wait. But we can adopt another social policy. Now, liberty can be quite useful as well because it allows us to expand our empire, gaining more cities, which is definitely something that we want to be looking at doing and doing it soon as well. And it will also give us a um, the extra culture boost. But I don't think I'm going to do that this time. Probably the next time I can adopt a social policy is the one most likely to do. I'm thinking monarchy at the moment because getting the boost on gold could be particularly useful for me. So I'm now getting 5 gold per turn instead of 3 gold per turn. Doesn't seem like a lot at the moment, and to be fair it isn't, but it's definitely warranted. So let's keep these guys moving. Let's try and find where these barbarians disappeared to. They've got to be around somewhere. They couldn't have uh, completely disappeared off the map. I did say that was going to be the last turn, but there's nothing particularly interesting going on on that turn, so I'm just going to skip through. So let's just have a quick look and see if we can find those barbarians. We can move across the river on that turn. We've got enough points to do it. I think I'm going to keep those guys in the forest but next to the clearing in case they come back from the north. And we're starting to head down here. Now Germany must be around here somewhere on the map because they were just the other side of Mombasa. So they've got to be around here somewhere. Um, but can't see where their capital is just yet. So hopefully on the next video we'll find out where Germany is. And uh, we'll be able to track down those barbarians. There's probably a barbarian camp somewhere down here, to be honest. I know we've, we've been there before, but it's in the fog of war. So there is a chance that a barbarian camp respawned. We will have a look down there at some point. And then we'll also, when this caravan is finished, make a settler. And I will probably settle somewhere around here because settling here would give me access to more dyes uh, more deer i would also get some horses some sheep some stone so this is probably a good place um possibly this tile here uh, next to a in between two hills so although it is a little bit close there i don't know that's a difficult one um one, two, three. Yeah, your, your borders usually only end up being three hexes away from your capital city. So being here is probably a good spot to be. So I'm going to earmark that uh, hex there next to the horses. That's probably where my second city is going to be. So thanks again for watching, guys. I hope that this video has been informative and you've learned a little bit more about the game. And I hope, if even if you do already know the game, that you're just enjoying watching. Uh, again, I'm going to apologise if I've been going through stuff that you guys already know, but it is quite a uh, complex game. And I do like to talk through my thought process for playing and hopefully there will be a few people that are new to the game or even considering buying the game. And uh, watching this video helps them get into it and really understand what Grand Strategies are all about. So, thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.